Well, greetings to you from my garden of the vicarage in Shotley Bridge. Uh, this is an offering of worship for the parishes of St Cuthbert Benfield side and St John the Evangelist Castle side, uh, different from other Sunday offerings of worship which have been made in recent months. Uh, this is the first Sunday, Sunday the 12th of, Ju of July, when we'll be able to have a Eucharist in each of our parishes. And so with the offering of the Eucharist at the altar in each of our churches, uh, this is not itself going to be a Eucharist, though there will be the opportunity to make an act of spiritual communion in the course of the service. So perhaps a little more informal. I'll be following in many ways the framework which we use for the first part of the Eucharist in the Liturgy of the Word, and I invite you to join in as best you can. We'll be using the readings as well for this coming Sunday, and particularly looking at the parable of the sower. But as well as that, I'll be marking the beginning of a new ministry for Phil Carter, who served as reader in the parish of St John Castleside, but now continues in preparation for his ordination as deacon um, as a commissioned lay worker. I'm afraid he can't be with me here in my garden at the moment, but he will be specially reintroduced to the congregation on Sunday afternoon in St John's Church as he begins his ministry in both our parishes. So please do keep him in your prayers. Let's bring ourselves now before God, recognizing his presence with us wherever we are. His presence as we know it in the Eucharist, but that presence we seek in every part of our lives. And we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We come before God recognizing our need, our need of his love and mercy in all things, our need of strength when we feel weak, of peace when we are anxious or fearful, our need of forgiveness too. The word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. So now we confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for failing you by what we do and also by what we think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son, Jesus, Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of his Holy Spirit. Amen. The collect which we use during this coming week. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The first reading is written in the prophet Isaiah, the 55th chapter, beginning at the 10th verse. And you can find these readings on the parish pew sheet, which has been sent out by email, which you can also find through our Facebook page and also through the resources page of our blog, stcuthberts.blogspot.com. Thus says the Lord, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the things that we've discovered being back in church is that congregations are not allowed to sing. So it's led to the rather strange thing that a cantor is allowed, uh, in other words, one single singer. Um, and I found myself using the responsorial psalm, singing the verses, but the congregation having to respond by speaking the response. However, because you may be in your own home, and I'm here in my garden, uh, we can sing the response as well. This is it. It's, you are to be praised, O God, in Zion. Alleluia. Uh, and I will try to sing it if you join in after each verse. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. Alleluia. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. Alleluia. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be paid, you that answer prayer. To you shall all flesh come to confess their sins. When our misdeeds prevail against us, you will purge them away. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. Alleluia. Blessed is the man whom you choose and take to yourself to dwell within your courts. We shall be filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You will answer us in your righteousness with terrible deeds, O God our Saviour. You that are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the distant seas. You are to be praised, O God in Zion. Alleluia. Who oh, by your strength made fast the mountains, you that are girded with power, who stilled the raging of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the tumult of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth are afraid at your wonders. The dawn and the evening sings your praises. You are to be praised, O God in Zion. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. 
and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, in fact, Jesus goes on and explains the parable. Uh, one of the other Gospels tells us it's because the um, uh, disciples don't really understand it. Um, we've probably heard it many times before. That sower who goes out and he sows, he's a careless sower, isn't he? Maybe that's something that we can add, and maybe that's Jesus' intent as well. He sows not just into a ploughed furrow, but throwing the seed wherever he may be going. And so the seed lands not only on the good soil, but also on the path, in thin soil, and amongst thorns. And while there's initial growth, of course, that's a seed which falls where there isn't very much soil, quickly withers in the heat of the sun. That seed which is planted amongst the thorns while it has initial growth is then choked by them but there is the seed which falls onto good soil and it bears much fruit a hundredfold sixtyfold thirtyfold let anyone with ears listen says jesus i don't know if it works in the hebrew or, or aramaic which jesus would have spoken on this occasion but of course to use that term ears is in a sense a bit of a joke isn't it let anyone with ears listen what does wheat or barley have it has ears if it's good fruit but only of course if it manages to flourish so are you somebody with ears do you hear what's going on? Are you ready to receive that seed as it's sown? That's the big question for us, isn't it? Are we good soil? I don't think it's predetermined whether we should be. It's up to us whether we can receive the word of Christ and allow that seed to be planted in our hearts and there to grow well, I say this as Phil Carter will be beginning a new ministry. He'd been selected for ordination. Um, he'd been asked to undertake a three-month placement in our neighbouring parish of Christchurch Concert. And indeed, he did begin it. But of course, it's been one which has been frustrated to a large extent by lockdown. He's done some phoning around the people of the congregation. He's contributed to them with his thoughts. But now he comes back to us, to our two parishes, and we hope that we will be able to receive his ministry with joy, that it's a ministry that will flourish. He's not been able to be ordained as he should have been last Sunday, the 5th of July. But instead, the Bishop of Durham has commissioned him as a lay worker and so he's now beginning that new ministry as assistant curate for our parishes alongside me in fact I can tell you as I record this that I've said morning prayer together with Phil in church that's a mark of our ministry together and I'm glad that we were joined by his wife Jean our authorized pastoral assistant as she is in St John's let me tell you some of the words that the bishop would have used to Phil in his ordination. 
It's recognizing what the ministry of a deacon is about. It's so that the people of God may be better equipped to make Christ known through a life of visible self-giving. Christ is the pattern of a deacon's calling and a deacon's commission. As Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, so a deacon should wash the feet of others. That's what will be said when finally Phil will be ordained. Hopefully it's Michaelmas at the end of September. The bishop goes on. Deacons are called to work with the bishop and the priests with whom they serve as heralds of Christ's kingdom. They are to proclaim the gospel in word and deed as agents of God's purposes of love. They are to serve the community in which they are set, bringing to the church the needs and hopes of all the people. They are to work with their fellow members in searching out the poor and weak, the sick and lonely, and those who are oppressed and powerless, reaching into the forgotten corners of the world that the love of God may be made visible. Gee, of course, that's a ministry in which all of us can share, isn't it? The word deacon actually means one who serves, one who ministers. But it's a particular ministry when it involves ordination. And I love that particular phrase that the deacon should be reaching into the forgotten corners of the world. Do we sometimes feel that we're forgotten? That reaching out needs to be enabled so that the love of God may be made visible. It's a sharing in the pastoral ministry of the church, in leading God's people in worship, the preaching of the word, bringing the needs of the world before the church in intercession, accompanying those who search for faith and bringing them to baptism. Deacons assist in administering the sacraments they distribute communion and minister to the sick and housebound. Actually, one of us asked of one of the bishops what marked the difference between a commissioned lay worker and a deacon. Well, the commissioned lay worker can do everything a deacon can, said the bishop, except to baptize. Actually, of course, anybody can baptize in an emergency, but we hope there aren't going to be those emergencies. Pray for Phil as he'll be working out his ministry in the coming months alongside me and serving our people. I'll be asking him, do you affirm your calling to the ministry of a deacon in the Church of God? Will you be faithful in the exercise of your new ministry as a lay worker? To each of those questions I hope that Phil will answer, I will. But then I'll be asking the people of our congregations, will you support Phil? in this new ministry and as he continues to prepare for ordination. It would be up to you to say, we will. Well, let me use a prayer which I will use with Phil at the commissioning within our own parish. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's continue now with our prayers of intercession, our prayers for the church and for this world in which we live. We pray particularly for the use of God's gifts to his church. And there's a response in our prayers. After I say the words, Jesus, Lord of your church, would you reply, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy, hear us. God, our Father, you give us gifts that we may work together in the service of your Son. Bless those who lead, amongst them fill, that they may be firm in faith, yet humble before you. Jesus, Lord of your church, 
in your mercy hear us. Bless those who teach, that they may increase our understanding and be open to your word for them. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy hear us. Bless those who minister healing, that they may bring wholeness to others, yet know your healing in themselves. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy hear us. Bless those through whom you speak, that they may proclaim your word in power, yet have their ears open to your gentle whisper. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy hear us. Bless those who work in your world today, that they may live for you, fulfill your purposes, and seek your kingdom first in the complexity of their daily lives. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy hear us. Bless those who feel that they have no gifts and are not valued, and those who are powerless by the world's standards, that they may share their experience of the work of your Spirit. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy, hear us. Let's make our prayer for those we know who have particular needs, and especially who find themselves in need of God's healing. Amongst them we pray for Bill, Ian, Ruth, Elia, Margaret, Dobson, Bill, Robert, Brian, Graham, Enid, Anne, and Joan. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your keeping those who have died. Of the recently departed, we pray for Betty Kethy, Bill Walker, and Bessie Thomas. Of those who have died in past years at this time, for Maurice Simpson, Philip Williamson, Frank Barnes, Vera Glendinning, Ada Mary Marjorie Hopper, Alan Moore, Arnold Jewett, Florence Annie Jobling, Joyce Isabel Addison, Elizabeth Varty, Mary Cowan, Lona Jenny Duncan, Raymond Wood, and Gladys Martin. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a time of silence, let us make our own particular thanks and prayers to God our Father. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Mary and the Apostles, of St John the Evangelist, St Cuthbert and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross we meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's join together in the words which Jesus has given to all who would follow him, learn from him, and pray in his name. So we join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm not in this service celebrating the Eucharist, but remember that Eucharist is to be celebrated for this Sunday in each of our churches. And whether you're there or not, it's celebrated for our whole community. And we remember that now as we seek to bring ourselves close to God in an act of spiritual communion. You'll find this is printed on the final page of this week's notice sheet. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. This is the blessing which we'll use as Phil is welcomed into his new ministry in our parishes. It's a blessing for each and every one of us. May the boldness of the Spirit transform you. May the gentleness of the Spirit lead you. May the gifts of the Spirit equip you to serve and worship God. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.